like the sound in the background. Exactly. Nice. It's for you. Just what we want. Well, welcome everyone. My name is John Jarvis. I am the director of the National Park Service. And for um, probably the last seven or eight months, I have served as the Department of Interior's lead for the Hurricane Sandy recovery, working with Secretary Donovan and the task force. Um, today, we are gathered here to uh, take our partnership with the city of New York to its next step, uh, which is really about announcing this extraordinary opportunity to um, use science uh, to apply it to resiliency in this um, extraordinary part of the world. When you think about Gateway National Recreation Area and our partnership with the city of New York, you know, we have extraordinary recreation. We bring tourists from around the world to this site as well as provide recreational opportunities for the people of New York. Uh, but now we're adding that element of resiliency uh, to this system because now Certainly Hurricane Sandy was a wake up for us all that we need those kinds of systems in place, both the combination of green and gray infrastructure to provide economic and ecological re resilience uh, to this great area. And science is gonna drive that. Um, we need the very best scientists uh, to help us understand these coastal ecosystems and to apply it on the ground uh, to really uh, uh, assist these communities and the ecology as well. Um, I have a great group up here. They're all going to give their piece of this story um, and it, we're going to start out with um, someone who really doesn't need much introduction in this crowd, but um, I, was, I was thinking about conservation in this, in the history of conservation in the Department of Interior. Really our, our great hero is Teddy Roosevelt. And, uh, but, you know, Teddy Roosevelt was born in New York City and actually ran for mayor. Um, he lost though, but uh, fortunately uh, Mayor Bloomberg uh, has won and uh, continues to be a great champion for conservation and parks in particular in, the, in their role in society and providing the life uh, of the people of New York. He is, a, he is our champion in many ways uh, for national parks and urban areas. Mayor Bloomberg. John, thank you. Just for the record, whenever you have somebody where you say he doesn't need any, or she doesn't need an introduction, trust me, they want one. <laughs> um, John, thank you. Jamaica Bay, as we all know, is one of the greatest natural treasures any city has within its borders, and our administration is working hard to make the bay an even stronger and more resilient natural resource for decades to come. Uh, as we all know, this work is urgent, as we saw last fall when Hurricane Sandy brought terrible damage to Jamaica Bay and to the Rockaways. But thanks to the leadership of HUD Secretary Sean Donovan, a former member of our administration, I might point out, the support of our Senator, Senator Schumer, and representatives in Congress, and around-the-clock work by city and federal workers, we're making great strides in our rebuilding efforts around the Bay. Yesterday, the Corps, Army Corps of Engineers began sand replenishment in the Rockaways, and special thanks go to Colonel Paul Owen. Paul, thank you very much, who's done a tremendous amount for our city since the storm. He had a lot more hair when he started this job. <laughs> I just noticed, you know, I think you're getting my problem. You want more gray hair more taxes and more birthdays. All are good things to have. Uh, but seriously, thank you that for the, what the Army really has done. You guys have stepped up and made a big difference in this city. Uh, we, wrote, we reopened all our city beaches in time for summer thanks to outstanding work by so many people and the leadership of First Deputy Mayor Patty Harris and our city's park commissioner, Veronica White. Uh, we had the honor uh, last week of uh, taking pictures with 50 carpenters who had rebuilt all of the boardwalks on Staten Island, another thing that we got done in time for people who enjoy uh, the 525-odd miles of coastline our city has. And in June, we announced a stronger, more resilient New York, uh, our comprehensive plan for rebuilding communities and protecting infrastructure from climate change. And now as part of that plan, we're kicking off phase two of our beach and boardwalk restoration. With our resiliency team at the Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability and the city's Economic Development Corporation, along with the Parks Department, the Army Corps, and the State Department of Environmental Conservation. That work really is vitally important, but in addition to building back stronger, we're also continuing to work that we, uh, continuing the work that we began before the storm. Last summer, if you remember, the city and the National Park Service signed a historic cooperative agreement for co-managing the Bay's 10,000 acres of federal and city-owned parkland. We also announced big future plans, including a world-class science and resilience institute 
and a public-private partnership to help support our efforts around the Bay. And today, those plans are taking a number of major steps forward. First, we're announcing that a consortium led by the City University of New York and the, uh, will head the new Science and Resiliency Institute at Jamaica Bay. Our partners at the Rockefeller Foundation are the driving force behind this new institute, especially the foundation COO and our former chief of staff, Peter Madonia. Uh, he encouraged the city and the National Park Service to look to Jamaica Bay as the home for this new center and he continues to work hand in hand with us as a former member of our administration only could as we go ahead and develop it. And we do owe a special thanks to CUNY Chancellor Bill Kelly and Vice Chancellor Julian Small for their dedication to this effort as well. The new consortium is really an all-star team of research institutions that includes Columbia, Cornell, Rutgers, and Stony Brook Universities and the Wildlife Conservation Society. And the Institute will focus its research on protecting and preserving urban ecosystems from development and from the effects of climate change and making nearby urban areas more resilient as well. The Institute will work in partnership with other schools, nonprofit organizations, government partners, and including city agencies, and it will serve as a coordinating body for the research field work taking place around the Bay and providing lab spaces for students and researchers. The city, you should know, has made an initial commitment of $3 million towards the Institute. Its first order of business will be organizing an international symposium with the Rockefeller Foundation this October called Urban Resilience in an Era of Climate Change. It will bring together global leaders in the field to address an issue that couldn't be more important to the future of all of our world cities, especially coastal cities like ours. We announced the creation of the Institute shortly before Hurricane Sandy, and we expect the work spearheaded by the Institute will help mitigate the damages, the dangers of future storms, both to the Bay and to the neighborhoods nearby. Lessons learned here will also help other cities around the world as they face the challenges of a changing climate. We're taking a second major step today by announcing the formal establishment of the new Jamaica Bay Rockaway Park Conservant Parks Conservancy. In partnership with the National Park Service and the city, the organization will help raise funds for the parkland covered by the agreement, collaborating, uh, collaborate with the community on programming, and help promote the parklands as a destination. And I'm happy to say the Conservancy will be chaired by Tom Secunda, chairman of the National Parks Conservation uh, Association, a good friend of mine, a great friend of the city, uh, a fellow co-founder of Bloomberg, I'm happy to say, and we really are very lucky to have him on board. The City-Federal Partnership is already bringing great new resources to Jamaica Bay and doing a lot to help it rebound from Sandy, along with Small Business Services Commissioner Rob Walsh, the Parks Department, and the National Park Service hired a restoration corps of around 200 New Yorkers, mostly local residents. The corps' work includes replanting and debris cleanup. Thank you to all you guys. Uh, alongside the community partners like the Jamaica Bay Echo Watchers and the American Littorial Society. A few of the core are with us today along with Birdie. Birdie is someplace around here, supposed to be. Birdie. Oh, there you are. I thought you'd <laughs> flown away, Birdie. <laughs> Birdie, our green YC mascot, to help us dig in, if you'll pardon the pun, and plant our new beach grass nursery at Floyd Bennett Field. The nursery will help the city and the National Park Service grow acres of made in New York beach grass to help make the coastline more resilient here and around the region. Our partnership has also brought great new amenities to Jamaica Bay, like food trucks, bike and boat rentals, and more hiking and recreation programs through our joint concessions, and there are many more exciting things to come. And before I turn the floor over to other speakers, I do want to thank some of the people who've been crucial to the success of this partnership. And that starts with John Jarvis, director of the National Park Service, uh, Joshua Lard, uh, the, uh, uh, Lard, the, the uh, commissioner of the National Parks of New York Harbor, and Vanashia Lannan in, at the state DEC. We also thanks to the private sector and philanthropic partners who gen whose generosity is helping make those efforts possible. And that includes Tom, uh, Lewis Bacon, and Ann Colley of the Moore Charitable Trust, 
uh, Eileen Safoni of National Grid and of course the generous support of the Rockefeller Foundation which has been instrumental to make this happen and a special thanks to another former member of our administration Kate Asher and the dedicated team at Happold Consulting for their hard work on this effort and if we have, don't have enough people to thank we have a few more Deputy Mayor Kaz Holloway and Environmental Protection Commissioner Carter Strickland who are leading the city's work to protect and strengthen the bay as well as John McLaughlin Director of Ecological Services at DEP. So now let me turn the floor over to some other speakers, beginning with somebody who has become a great friend of New York, although she can never do enough for New York. Uh, she thinks she has responsibility for the rest of the country. We don't view it that way. <laughs> Sally, everything for New York City. The Secretary of the Interior, Sally Jewell. Sally. Thank you, Mayor Bloomberg, and thank you all for being here. A special thanks to those in the uh, blue shirts who are out here fixing this landscape up. I was here probably a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, working alongside these guys briefly. They've worked all summer cleaning up uh, sand that was where we didn't really want it to be. But more importantly, uh, developing a connection to this place that might be a little different than what they had before they showed up for the Student Conservation Association. I want to thank Dale Penny, who's in the audience, who runs the organization. Just does amazing work all over the country. But I'll tell you, connecting the community of New York to these green spaces that are a, a public transit right away is going to change the lives not only of these young people, but of the people that they will influence. Because uh, this is a great laboratory. Uh, it's a laboratory where we saw Hurricane Sandy have a huge impact. We saw green infrastructure like this actually make a big difference in protecting a number of structures. We saw a gray infrastructure that didn't work so well, but we also saw that uh, we are in a time of profound change in um, the power of the storms that we're facing. We need to look at uh, different kind of flood maps than we've looked at before, and Jamaica Bay is going to be a perfect, perfect place for the whole country to learn about resilience and about science and how these natural ecosystems in combination with the man-made ecosystems actually are going to, um, to act. So this is all about the power of partnerships. We're proud, again, to partner with Mayor Bloomberg on this effort. Uh, the National Park Service and the City of New York are working hand-in-hand uh, -hand around uh, Jamaica Bay, and you just don't get assets like this that often this close to a population center. And uh, I know Tom Secunda, who I've known for a long time because we served together on the NPCA board, has told me about what hasn't happened out here and what the potential is, and he's a man with vision, and I know will help make that happen. The Rockefeller Foundation, um, CUNY, and your role here is uh, going to be so critical as we establish this new Science and Resilience Institute. And I know that uh, the mayor is looking at this through a New York lens, but I am looking at this through a whole country lens because we have so much that we can learn right here in Jamaica Bay that's going to help us build green infrastructures to address climate change, which is upon us. And I certainly see it as I go across the public lands that are part of the Department of the Interior. This is going to be a top-tier research institute. It's going to build the bring the best and the brightest here. CUNY is going to be a terrific uh, partner in helping us coordinate how do we manage coastlines, how do we manage storms like the uh, things that we've had. So um, I'm proud to announce today that the Department of the Interior, as part of our efforts in Sandy uh, Relief, which has been spearheaded by John Jarvis, is going to be um, launching a competitive grant for $100 million. We'll be uh, taking grant applications. We're going to be working with the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation to help us process those grants and um, ask for real creativity, uh, good science, good creative thought on how we can use this devastating Hurricane Sandy and learn from it. Learn from it in a way that's not only going to impact the Sandy uh, corridor, but is going to impact communities well beyond. And I hope that the students here at, at SEA and the folks from uh, City Parks in New York will help us be part of that effort as we uh, with work with folks um, on those grants. So thank you for your interest. Thank you for the Rockefeller Foundation's support, for uh, CUNY's support, for the mayor, uh, for my colleagues uh, in the federal government, particularly Sean Donovan, who's done such a great job of leading this effort, and John Jarvis, who has represented uh, Interior very effectively. You know, I was 
looking at this map, and if you haven't been to over to Floyd Bennett Field and gone into the visitor center there, I encourage you to do that. Having this green space right here around New York is rare. So treasure it. We'll be your partners in making sure we take care of it, that we learn lots of lessons from this, that we teach it to uh, young people throughout uh, New York and New Jersey and, and the coastline, and uh, that we all learn how to be part of a solution in a changing climate. And I know that this doesn't look much like a, 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 um, a bulkhead, but it's really effective when done uh, well. So I'm sure that uh, CUNY and uh, those who are going to be participating in the competitive grants are going to be able to uh, really help us figure that out. Thank you also, Colonel Owen, for your efforts uh, in this restoration. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn the podium over to a, a colleague and uh, someone who's becoming a friend on the cabinet, and that is uh, HUD Tech Secretary Sean Donovan, who has done all of our uh, uh, all of our departments and our federal government and this region a great service through his leadership on the uh, Hurricane Sandy Task Force. So please join me in welcoming Sean Donovan. Thank Sally, thank you so much. Um, Sally has only been on board as Interior Secretary a very short time, and you can already feel her imprint on so much of the work that's being done around the country. And uh, I just want to thank you, Sally, for your uh, le great, great leadership in the work that you're doing. Bringing the kind of innovation that this competition you just announced uh, will bring is something that I can just feel uh, will be a hallmark of your time at Interior. So thank you, Sally, for your leadership. to Mayor Bloomberg uh, for your wonderful leadership. Uh, and I know you care about New York, but I will say this country is very lucky to have you as a leader talking about and leading on climate change in so many ways. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, to, to John, who's been a great partner uh, leading the effort uh, at the Park Service. Uh, to Veronica White, who I had the great pleasure to work with in so many different ways in my own time uh, in the city here. Uh, to Peter Madonia, uh, Judy Roden at the Rockefeller Foundation, to CUNY, uh, to Tom, to all of our partners here. Uh, this is a remarkable, remarkable show of force here today in the work that we're doing. Uh, we gather about nine and a half months after Hurricane Sandy devastated communities across New York City, but across this entire region as well. In its wake, our nation was forced to face some very simple truths. That climate change is real, that it's posing new and growing threats to our neighborhoods, and in the future, we need to build our communities in a way that ag addresses these growing challenges. We can't just build back the way we were. We have to build back better and stronger. This was a real wake-up call to some, but not to anyone who's standing here on this podium today. That's because each of you has been committed to making our nation greener, more sustainable, and more resilient since long before Sandy struck. And it's hard to think of a better example of this foresight than the re revitalization of Jamaica Bay. The effort is remarkable on so many levels. And uh, given that we have a few speakers left, uh, I'm not going to tell you every reason I love this project. I'm not going to tell you about the time my wife and I came to Floyd Bennett Field with our two young sons to give them a little culture because there was a dance performance in the amazing airplane museum there. They thought they were just seeing some cool airplanes. They were actually getting some culture. Anybody who hasn't see, been to see the museum um, there would highly recommend it. Um, but let's start with the natural beauty of this place. As Director Jarvis knows well, uh, I'm a real enthusiast, uh, and as I was talking to Sally about my visit to Yosemite just a few weeks ago with my son, the idea that there's such a remarkable and expansive park right here in New York City never ceases to amaze me. The environmental benefits of this place are so important. Improved water and air quality for families uh, across Brooklyn and across the entire city. Uh, it's provided habitat to many species, both on land and in the water. But if that was all the park did, it would be enough. But it's not all that the park does. It provides, as Sally said, the green infrastructure, like parks and wetlands, that also help to protect our communities. Recent studies suggest that green infrastructure can be even more effective than gray infrastructure. Sea wall, the gray infrastructure like seawalls, levees, and tidal gates. That's why the President's Climate Action Plan calls on us to combine resilience and sustainability efforts. 
because in many ways, the efforts are one and the same. Now, there's one other thing I want to say about this remarkable place where we are. As you can all see by the people standing next to me today, this effort reflects a remarkable level of collaboration, not only between different levels of government, but also academic partners, philanthropic organizations. Back in November, when President Obama asked me to chair the Hurricane Sandy Rebuilding Task Force, he charged us with helping to coordinate the recovery efforts, not only across the administration, but across all levels of government, and to make sure the public, private, and philanthropic sectors were all working together to leverage all of our resources as one team. Like this remarkable effort at Jamaica Bay, we work to do just that through initiatives like our Rebuild by Design competition. This is a worldwide competition that will develop path-breaking, cutting-edge, innovative projects to protect and enhance the entire region that was affected by Sandy. We launched this initiative in partnership with the Rockefeller Foundation, and it's no coincidence that their name keeps coming up. That's because the Rockefeller Foundation has made an incredible commitment to promoting urban resilience through a $100 million investment in the future of cities worldwide. And Rebuild by Design has already brought together world-class talent from a variety of fields. Over 140 teams representing more than 15 countries submitted proposals representing the top engineering, architecture, design, landscape architecture, and planning firms, as well as research institutes and universities uh, across the globe. Last Friday, we selected 10 finalist teams to participate in an intense eight-month process that includes both analysis and design. The goal of Rebuild by Design is to break down silos and old ways of thinking. And it's just one more example of the kind of ideas that are going to be in our rebuilding strategy, the report to the president that we put together that we're going to announce uh, later this month. Billions of dollars are already hitting the streets. And this strategy outlines how we're going to work with all of you to get these funds invested quickly and establish the guidelines for billions of dollars more to come for our in infrastructure. Our continued investment in the future of this region will be guided, as always, by our commitment to cutting red tape, getting resources where they're needed effectively and efficiently. But as we do so, we will ensure the region is rebuilt to withstand 21st century challenges using the best science and technology available. An emphasis on green infrastructure, regional coordination between all levels of government, and the engagement of academic, nonprofit, and philanthropic institutions. So thank you for the model that you've given us today. Thank you, Sally, for your leadership to bring exactly the kind of innovation that we're searching for in the work that you're doing with your competition you've announced today. And thank you, Mayor Bloomberg, for your leadership here in New York City and across the globe on making this a better place for our children and our grandchildren to grow up. Thank you all. Wrapping up, you can speak. Yeah, uh, Peter Madonia. Yeah. Not a bad lineup to bat clean up for. Um, and if it's not painfully obvious, I am a. This is both personally rewarding because I'm an avid user of our beaches, um, and professionally um, exciting. So uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, the Secretary Jules, Secretary Donovan, um, and everyone who's been involved in uh, developing the work of the Conservancy. Um, and advancing this idea of a, a resiliency institute. Um, Tom Seclinda, Adrian Benepe who are on the board, Kate Asher, who's been running point on this from day one, and all the members of the Conservancy as they think through um, what can it do. Um, I want to thank my colleague Nancy Keat, who is our resident expert at Rockefeller and the go-to person for all things resilience. Um, and she's also played a role on the Conservancy board. Again, a historic day. Um, New York shows itself as a leader. Um, we've always thought about New York as a laboratory, not just locally and not just nationally, but globally, because um, we think globally at Rockefeller. But it's a credit to the mayor, um, who always is willing to take bold leadership positions. Um, you know, resilience, the buzzword, made news after Hurricane Sandy. Um, it's a clear reminder of the importance of bodies of water like this um, that protect a million people or should be protecting a million people and, and the value of those bodies of water. Um, but we've been thinking about resilience for 
about eight years now on the Gulf Coast, um, in Africa's agricultural markets, and in cities across Asia. Um, but in New York, we really made our first grant to, for Jamaica Bay in 2011. And it was in that grant that we actually specified the need for a center for resilience, for both thinking about it and putting it into practice. Um, and that was two years before Hurricane Sandy. And I'm going to step back for a minute as a, both uh, the chief operating officer of Rockefeller, but also as a former member of the uh, mayor's administration. Once the mayor partnered with then Secretary Salazar, this idea of a resilience center, it, it just occurred to me that this could become real. Um, he was never, he's never been afraid to take sometimes crazy ideas, I can assure you, um, and put his shoulders behind them um, if he thought they were important and he thought they could work. And that is what leadership is about. Um, but New York isn't alone in the need for this kind of thing, and, and that's why the mayor's leadership um, becomes even more valuable. There, of the 25 most densely populated counties in the country, 23 are along coastlines. And cities around the world are, are in the same position. So New York as a laboratory um, became very, very critical to us as we thought about global solutions. Um, as Secretary Donovan mentioned, we've invested more than $100 million in building urban resilience. And our definition of it is to help people, institutions, and cities prepare for, withstand, and emerge stronger from acute shocks and chronic stresses. That's how we think about resilience. Uh, our most recent effort includes a 100 Resilient Cities Challenge, where we'll select 100 cities from around the globe, provide them technical support and resources for developing plans and implementing plans to build resilience in those cities. And hopefully, with an eye towards leveraging the billions of dollars that are available for infrastructure financing. Um, this is our first investment in bricks and mortar. Um, and that, quite frankly, that's because this is the first of its kind. Um, and we believed in 2011 this was an idea whose time had come, and today we're sure of it. And uh, I want to thank everybody on this podium and thank everybody who's worked hard to make this happen. John. Thank you, Peter. We really, really appreciate your incredible support here. Well, next here from the Chancellor from the City University of New York, uh, Bill Kelly. Thank you, John. Yeah. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to begin my remarks by echoing what Secretary Jewell just said about the power of partnership. As you can see, looking at the podium and listening to uh, uh, everyone here today speak about how we have worked together to create this exercise, uh, it's, it's enormously inspiring. I want to echo everyone's thanks for everyone here. I won't repeat all of those things, uh, all of those names again, but I wanted to say what a pleasure and a privilege it is to be on the podium with these people today. Also wanted to note um, some of our, my CUNY colleagues who are here who have worked very hard to make this happen. Vice Chancellor Jillian Small, Kingsborough Community College Provost and Interim President uh, Stuart Suss, Brooklyn College Provost Bill Tramontano, our valued colleagues from our partner institutions who are here today, and a particular welcome to New York State Director of Storm Recovery Seth Diamond, who is representing Governor Cuomo. At CUNY, we're fortunate to work with both a governor and a mayor who understand that we live in a knowledge economy and who have invested wisely to enhance the state's and the city's competitiveness. Today we celebrate with full heart Mayor Bloomberg's foresight in this area. Under his leadership, New York City has emerged as a center of science and entrepreneurship. The inauguration of the Jamaica Bay Science and Resilience Institute is the latest iteration of that extraordinary vision. The mayor has led the way in forging educational partnerships that not only build our scientific knowledge, that a worthy goal in itself, but also drive improve sustainability and the economic development that comes with it. CUNY is proud to lead the scientific collaboration that focuses on one of our region's most important resources, the one you see behind you. You know that I, th I would think that Hurricane Sandy hit, I think, two days before the proposals for this project were due. Timing that reinforced the urgency of restoring and protecting this area and addressing long-term sustainability issues city and region-wide. The new institute that we are here to celebrate and to inaugurate will focus on issues such as water quality, wetlands restoration, and climate change to help us improve the resiliency of this remarkable ecosystem. We expect that our work will extend well beyond these shores as well. 
as we reach out to the scientific community to share what we're learning, to learn from them, and to, uh, and to engage again in, in that power of partnership, to deploy and to engage it, to learn from others working on similar issues around the globe. These encouraging prospects are because of the excellence and the devotion of our academic partners, as well as our partners in city, state, and federal government. The National Park Service in particular deserves our praise for having the vision to open these natural resources to local scientists and researchers. We are grateful for their work. And the city's academic and research institutions, I would note, were eager to be part of this effort. Our team includes, as you've heard, Columbia, Cornell, NASA, Goddard, Rutgers, Stony Brook, and Stevens Institute. Some, like our colleagues at Rutgers and Stony Brook, whom I've had the pleasure of speaking with today, have long been engaged in research at Jamaica Bay. From all sides, the commitment to this project runs deep and the potential for progress is tremendous. My thanks to one and all for making it a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. We really look forward to the partnership. And it looks like we've been joined by Congressman Greg Meeks. So, Congressman, would you like to? The ecosystem. How important is that? Let me first thank all of the partners that are up here with the leadership of the mayor. Because for the residents of the Rockaways especially, you look at this view, you go over to the ocean side, what a beautiful, beautiful part of the city of New York. Yet we ought not take it for granted. We need to understand it. We need to learn to live with it and how we protect ourselves. You know, this project was planned before Superstorm Sandy, but Sandy made us realize how important it really is. Because when we learn to live with this beautiful environment, with global change, with, with climate change, if we learn to live with nature, we also know there are answers that nature tells us so that we can live with it. We've got to research it, we've got to understand it, and we've got to spread the information so that residents and the individuals that live around it understand it. And that's what this project is all about. It's about us appreciating the beautiful place that we call this planet. And you know, all over the world we find the ecosystems and water and nature and we're trying to figure out how we can live with its natural beauty. That's what this is all about. And we can't do it, government can't do it by itself. I know that our secretaries here, Secretary Donovan and Secretary Jewell and those from the federal government are working hard. We can do our part. We've got the mayor here from the city of New York who's been focused on our waterways and making a difference and so that we can have a better city of New York, but he can't do it by himself. And we've got educators here from schools and our higher education of learning they are doing, they're doing what they have to do to teach, but they can't do it by themselves. And you have the Rockefeller Foundation here, who's bringing the private part of this and members from the private community to get it done, but they can't do it by themselves. But collectively, together, we can get this thing done. And we can have some great benefits. Because as I look at the young people that are sitting around here, they can learn about it. What does that do? That also creates jobs and opportunities for individuals in the communities of which they live. It brings us all together around that one thing that's most important to every human being that's sitting in here, especially those of us who live around this water. It preserves all of us for the human beings that we are. And so I thank the mayor, I thank the secretaries, I thank the National Park Service and all of you here on behalf of the residents of the Rockaways for saying that we are going to live here. You know, people are not moving away. We're not afraid of nature. We're not gonna go away. We're gonna still live here, but we're gonna to learn to live with it and understand it and thrive from it. We will rebuild and we're gonna rebuild smarter than we ever did before. We're gonna rebuild better than we ever did before and we're gonna do it together. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. And you know, there, if you just 
tune out the bridge and turn out the planes, there behind it you can hear the lapping of the waves, the birds, and just get a little scent of that salt air. So it's, it's here, uh, and we're all part of this restoration. So enough talking, time to put a little ink on the paper. So if I could invite um, uh, Mayor Bloomberg and Secretary Donovan and Secretary Jewell to come to the table and pick a pen, we will consummate uh, this agreement.